Hi everyone, I'm Om. Uh, I work as head of market research and UX at a company called Wild Life. I've been in the gaming industry for the last 15 years. A uh, few more bits about me. So in my career, I, I have worked across various platforms in gaming, right from PC era to console to casino and lately mobile gaming. As far as my education goes, I have a bachelor's in economics honors backed by a master's in advertising and graphics. Uh, I also studied behavioral economics, uh, which helps me a lot with my uh, research and psychology related aspects of uh, UX and UR work. Um, <clears throat> I also consider myself very fortunate that during my career journey, uh, I have worked with some of the best brands and franchises in the world. Some of them include uh, IPs like Ice Age, Star Trek, My Little Pony, uh, Wizard of Oz and Marvel to name a few. And I consider myself extremely lucky, lucky that the products that I've worked on have been downloaded and used by over 5 billion players worldwide. So um, I'm also a bit of a globetrotter. Uh, my career path in gaming industry and UX and building UR teams have led me across the globe. I started my career way back in India. Uh, then I uh, took part in a startup. I was part of a startup which also worked for a brief while in San Francisco. Then I moved to Auckland, New Zealand, and finally, currently, I am living and working in Ireland, Dublin. All right. <clears throat> so let's start with the, the topic for the day. The topic for the day is how to build high performing UX and UR team in companies which either have no UX maturity or low UX maturity. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have come across those kind of hurdles in your career. And I'm going to today share with you my experience. This is my fourth or fifth role working in a director position. And <clears throat> I worked in startups, which were as small as, you know, five people or six people when they started out and to global multinational giants, Fortune 500 companies, which have almost close to 99,000 people across uh, the world. So I've come across orgs which either had no UX maturity uh, and what I mean by that is they've never had a UX or UR department before or a low UX and UR maturity. That is, they had some sort of UX and UR that they were doing, but it was not at the standard you would expect from, you know, uh, <clears throat> more sophisticated or what we call matured UX and UR orgs like Apple or Microsoft. So my journey with Wildlife <clears throat> started way back in 2019. Wildlife is one of the top 50 publishers of mobile games in the world. And uh, the company reached a, a landmark last two, in last two weeks where, you know, the number of downloads reached 3 billion. So our games have been downloaded 3 billion times all over the world, which is a huge milestone. Um, <clears throat> Wildlife works exclusively in casual and mid-core gaming space. We have games... Uh, in sports genre like Tennis Clash, which is the number one tennis uh, game in the world on mobile, we also have some shooter category games and multiplayer games like Zuba. So as I mentioned before, my journey with Wildlife began in 2019. Um, that time I was working as a consultant. And uh, so Wildlife is a 10 years old company. Uh, it had explosive growth and it was coming out of this phase of from being a startup, you know, to scaling to a bigger organization with more processes and, you know, um, practices that they wanted to adopt into the production pipeline. So in 2019, they were working on a product called Tennis Clash, which was in soft launch, not globally launched yet. They reached out to me for a UX audit. Uh, I looked at it, I used the lens of UX heuristics, did my research around competitors, best practices, and, you know, um, send them uh, suggestions and recommendations regarding pain points that I could encounter. And I was very impressed the way with which Wildlife was, you know, embracing the feedback and uh, the moment I gave them the feedback, within 24 to 48 hours, they were able to, you know, implement or change things in the game, which, which really impressed me. Uh, long story short... <clears throat> 2019, they launched the game worldwide and uh, kudos to the team. Uh, Tennis Slash became the 10th most downloaded game on Google and uh, Google Play Store and iOS uh, worldwide uh, in mobile games category, which was a huge achievement for them. So during our interaction, <clears throat> I think the product teams did realize that, you know, they are missing this expertise of user experience and user research design, and they do want to build a department around it. So I was offered a job, uh, but it was based in Brazil as the company's headquartered there. Uh, but for personal reasons, you know, I could not uh, make a move at that point of time. But as you know, in the 2020 pandemic happened, things changed. A lot of companies got used to uh, working from home. So did employees. 
and by during this duration my wife also had an office in dublin so they again offered me the job and i was more than happy to join them uh, i've been with them now for close to one and a half years and i manage a distributed team uh, of ux and ur uh, folks who are around the world based in brazil us canada and europe <clears throat> all right so now let's get into the meat of the presentation today i'm going to talk about how to scale high impact UX research teams remotely. Uh, so this is a challenge, as I mentioned before, uh, during my 15 years journey, I've come many times, you know, I've been in this position where I had to build and either from scratch or scale existing UX and UR team in no and low UX maturity uh, organizations. So I'm going to today share with you, even the context is a lot within wildlife. I'm also going to share with you in general, what are the tips and tricks which have worked for me, you know, uh, processes, what I've learned from them. So my one of, one of the biggest uh, uh, key learning for me is no strategy has one size fit all approach. You need to approach each company's culture with an open mind. Now, what do I mean by that? So what I mean by that is <clears throat> I always divide the kind of work that I have to, you know, undertake when I'm building a department into strategy and tactics you know strategy is a long term vision which should guide your guide your day to day tactics so even though if you go to these companies where you know um, you can find some common ground you can find some common day to day uh, problems like for example ux processes are not followed well in companies people don't understand what you, what the value of user research is or ux designers don't have the bandwidth to cover all the projects you know these are common tactical day to day things that you will experience so these are common but the strategy that is required long term vision how you want to build the department it depends a lot on you know what the culture of that company is what the goals of that company is because your strategy has to be aligned with the goals of the company. So what I try to do is I don't go with the biased mind that what has worked for me in the past will work also in this particular company. So go with an open mind, start with a clean, a clean slate. And uh, in my life, that's what I did. For the first two weeks, I had just one job. I focused on information gathering. You know, I, I put my listening ears on and it it's more about learn to listen. You know, often when you join a company, um, <clears throat> in a manager position or a lead or a senior position, you feel this kind of, you know, I'm sure all of us have felt unsaid pressure. Either you might think, yeah, your boss, your stakeholders expect you to hit the ground running or you yourself, you know, put this kind of pressure on you. Hey, I am so, you know, uh, in this position, I have this much experience. Uh, I I'm supposed to hit the ground running. So there is this unsaid pressure where, you know, you want to immediately go in, jump into the middle of things and, you know, start fixing things around. But in my experience, it it's better to invest time in learning and listening rather than jumping in, you know, and start solving problems because you have to find out what are the right problems to solve before you start reacting to what people are telling you. So the first two weeks, I just spent information gathering and I used a range of techniques for it. Remember, this was at the peak of pandemic. So I was working remotely. My team was remote. My uh, stakeholders were remote. We were all over the world. <clears throat> so couple of ways I gathered this information about what are the pain points, you know, what are, what is the company mindset? What is the mindset of the stakeholders? I did a lot of Zoom interviews with my stakeholders. These could, this could include my boss, his boss, VPs, GMs, product leads, and just to trying to understand their mindset. And at the same time, you are also trying to gauge, you know, are there, are there supporters of UX and UR or they're skeptics? You know, this is very important. Nobody will openly say, you know, but you can, gauge from the demeanor and it's important uh, because as you launch initiatives down the line you know who are the people you know whom you can you know approach immediately and who are the people whose hearts and mind you have to change which is very important so next team next thing is to do team one-to-ones i'm trying to gather information all the way from the top of the chain to you know the grassroots level so uh, a lot of uh, um pain points around what the problems are, what the issues are, what are we lacking? Uh, I learned from my team through team one-to-ones. And then I also wanted to understand uh, what is it that the teams or the project teams with whom we work, whose work we complement, like product managers, QA, game designers, you know, uh, user interface designers, what are the issues they are facing? You know, so I want to make sure that I'm also capturing information from these project teams. And, and they were, to be honest, 
close to eight to ten project teams because wildlife had you know live products and they also had games which were in development so new products and live products so in order to get feedback from this wide array of uh, you know uh, stakeholders i used myro i used design thinking workshops and that way i was able to gather feedback from close to you know uh, different 30 40 people outside of my core stakeholder and uh, team group so <clears throat> the idea was to learn to listen this that's what i did first two weeks and then i put all this together in a doc i made sure you know i could analyze what were the commonalities what are the common pain points everybody was talking about but more importantly i also wanted to see what are the priorities it might be that people are talking about one thing which is very common but that may be very um, that may be down the list in their you know uh, list of priorities so i gathered all that i narrowed it down using convergence and divergence techniques of uh, design thinking and presented the finding to my key stakeholders my boss in this case and uh, to be honest my boss said yeah it, it took you only two weeks to figure out what the gaps are it took me two months so that, so that was like a compliment and it, it was uh, i think time uh well spent you know rather than going in and saying i want to fix this i want to fix that take your time understanding you know the company vision okrs and the pain points everybody is experiencing so <clears throat> in this document obviously I wanted to identify what the gaps are, but there were also, I was not trying to solve everything at one go because there were problems which would take longer to solve, but you definitely have to, you know, uh, focus on solving the immediate fires in any company that you join, there will be immediate fires for, for whom you have to design stop gap solution. You know, they might be temporarily there, but they need to be taken care of. Otherwise you can never, uh, you know, uh, you'll always be caught up in those small issues. You won't have a time to think more strategically. So example of these uh, small fires are work overload for my UX team. There were two people, including me, three people, and there were like eight to nine projects. And uh, even though uh, UX was being embedded in certain projects, the process was not followed, research was undervalued. So these are some of the immediate tactical issues that you always see. And <clears throat> I want to make sure that I'm getting these out of the way. So the way I usually do this is I ensure, first of all, that we are tracking all the work, tracking all the requests that are coming our way. So there are always these tactical issues, you know, uh, for example, people are overloaded with work or there are immediate fires that you need to take care of. So the way I do it normally is uh, I make sure that my resources capacity is tracked. I ensure that every designer or researcher is working only at 80% capacity and they are only working either on a large feature or a small feature at any given point of time. And then they have this 20% floating capacity, which they can give for consulting to other projects where they cannot work hands on, you know, because it's about scaling impact. How can we add value? to projects which have high priority, but at the same time, give consulting bandwidth, you know, they might not work on those projects hands-on, but they are able to, you know, give two, three hours a week to those PMs or designers uh, as they walk them through their designs and point out from a, a heuristics perspective, what is working, what is not working. And the reason I, I wanted to free up some time, some time for my team was because I definitely wanted to start pushing them in a direction where we are thinking about growth. We are thinking about strategic initiative and neither they could, you know, be in that mind frame nor I, if we are bogged down heavily in our day to day work. So <clears throat> often I found that these tactical issues are symptoms, not causes. So my key takeaway here is, you know, even though you have to treat the symptoms, sometimes with stop gap solution never forget that these symptoms are have have deep causes which need to be taken care of for example if people are not following ux and ui processes it's very likely that you know they are not there there is lack of stakeholder education it is very likely that you know they do not understand either what you value ux and ui are adding and these kind of initiatives require more time to solve so while you want to treat the symptoms you want to focus on the you know causes you want to treat the disease not the symptoms alone all right so next step is change management uh so what do i mean by change management imagine that you are coming into a company um and you are here to you know uh, do a shake up of the department or the processes the team your team and existing product teams they are used to working in a certain manner and uh, when you come in and try to you know shake things up there's always a bit of resistance so change management requires not only changing the company's mindset, but your team's mindset as well. Change is not a one-way street. It's not that you just have to change people around you. You also have to change yourself and your team's mindset. Now, what do I mean by that? So 
it will become more clear as I talk about this uh, HCD approach. So when I was trying to build a department, uh, in my mind, I wanted to do something more aspirational. I don't want to build just a team of high performance UX and UR folks. I don't want to build just a department. I wanted to build an institution, you know, a human-centered design-based user experience and research institution. And the reason for that is if we strive for something more aspirational, you know, you will be inspiring and motivating the team more. And it's about legacy, you know, kind of, uh, I want to build something which will, you know, continue even after I have left the company, even if the team members leave this, this institution, which is a repository of knowledge our processes, our pipelines, which, which anybody who's coming in either in my place or my team members place is able to, you know, go through and pick up uh, the job from there. So I want to build an institution, not just a department or a team. So the way we structured ourselves, uh, we call ourselves the UXR team, the user experience and research team. And I chose that we should be more human centered design than user centered design. Now, this is a learning that has come to me, you know, uh, a lot of design teams out there, even the design teams I've built in the past were more user centered design. And as you know, in user-centered design, design happens around the user. The user is the center of the focus. But with human-centered design, uh, I believe we broaden the definition. Often I've seen in companies uh, which are very UCD-centered, there is a unspoken rift between the business product stakeholders and the design and research teams. Because you often hear business talk about LTVs, uh, you know, revenue numbers, while as designers and researchers who are focused on UX and UR craft, you care more about engagement, retention, and satisfaction. So often there is this headbutting which happens. You know, you can see that rift, and I can I see this frustration often in uh, teams that I've handled. Researchers and designers are like they're like, yeah, nobody gets the value of it. You know, they just don't understand what we do. So with human-centered design, we broaden the definition. What we say is experience of every person who touches the product is important for us and this definitely you know covers our customers our players but also our stakeholders our developers our uh, qa people our designers our product managers who are building the product because they are the ones who are actually building that product so we extend the empathy umbrella from customers all the way to stakeholders and with human centered design we try to uh position ourselves in a place we are where we are not just solving stakeholder issues where but also customers so we, we are solving player issues player pain points but we are also uh taking upon ourselves to complement and help solve uh, stakeholder issues so under the hcd human center design umbrella uh i wanted to incorporate a ux stream which we we had to a ux designers i wanted to create a user research team to complement the ux team and the third Third part that I wanted to emphasize was design thinking. Design thinking is great for innovation. It is it is a great problem solving tool, innovation tool for stakeholders. So that's why I wanted to incorporate design thinking, user research, and UX together under this HCD uh, institution that I wanted to build. Now, <clears throat> aim for the stars and you might just reach the tube light. So like I said, I always like to have aspirational goals because it's okay that you, know, you do need a North Star, something which can guide you uh, to get there, not today, not in six months. It's fine if it will take us two years, three years, five years to get there, but we do need that North Star guiding light. Why are we, what we are doing today, why we are doing it. So it's always good to have aspirational goals, even, you know, if, if they're too far out, if they're too so high in standard that, you know, you might not achieve them, you know, uh, immediately, but it's fine because that's what I find inspirational about them. So here's an example of, you know, the games UXR vision we built. We built our entire strategy document, but this was the main vision uh, uh, for us. Uh, develop a world-class human-centered design experience and innovation institution by bringing together great talent pool, cutting edge tools, empowering our game teams to move fast, validate design hypothesis and capture underserved player needs and values. So if you look at this vision, even though the document had a lot more details in it, this is kind of a distillation of um, the expectations and the pain points of my team who wanted, you know, higher standards, more cutting edge tool, um, great uh, processes, and uh, at the same time, uh, 
stakeholders who one of the company values we had is we move fast you know we are good at innovating uh, so we work at a very fast pace so how do we help our business stakeholders uh, decide when they have a hypothesis how do we help them validate design problems you know using research so that's why we wanted to capture uh, these statements in our uh, uxr vision so some of the strategic ux pillars we we kept it simple there, there were three strategic ux pillars build world class experience with players and for that we defined what world class looked for us when we looked at ourselves and the competitors and made sure that our practices reflected continue to build player first mentality now this is something which comes under you know um changing the mindset of the organization we wanted to invest in stakeholder education because it's not just the ux and ur people's responsibility to ensure that our customers get a good experience it's the responsibility of the player uh, sorry it's the responsibility of every person who's touching the product so through this player first mentality initiative we invested in internal processes where we are doing all hands we are talking to different departments we are sharing case studies benchmarks to educate them you know on the value of ux and ur and the broad range of techniques we can offer and the third part was empower game teams and innovate with research we wanted to empower game teams in terms of decision making decision making through user experience design through user research of quant and qual data and of course use design thinking for innovation so given we had these goals and this vision we were a very small team so we started out with a service team approach three designers who had their priority projects to which they would give 80% of their bandwidth 10% of their bandwidth would go as consultants on some other projects and another 10% was reserved for these strategic initiatives that we were trying to do because we are saying there's so much we have to do define processes uh, benchmarks you know um, and uh, okay our vision who's going to do that i really like to do that with my team i like to involve my entire team so i definitely made sure that we had that 10% bandwidth uh, committed for it so um this allowed us to you know uh, cover wider ground add more impact and uh, lead by example definitely i i think like many of you might have found it that even though you are a people manager you have to be hands on and i think that's a good thing in certain instances so yeah 30 60 70 percent ratio later it moves from you know uh, 40 60 to 30 70 how much time you are spending as a uh, people manager how much time you are spending hands on but it's a good way to you know lead the team by example so given that we were a small team the concept of creating a full stack ux designer appealed to us so what we did was we wanted to create a designer who was not a unicorn per se but had the capabilities to you know conduct ux audits you know using usability heuristics they they could do user research now i i did not expect them to do you know uh, deep user research like diary studies or you know uh, creating uh, player motivation studies but definitely uh focus groups uh benchmarking research uh, uh usability tests this is something we can expect uh, a ux designer to do and if they don't have that skills we wanted to invest time in you know uh, bringing them up to speed via framing prototyping and i also included uh, training my entire team in design thinking because i wanted them first to use it within our uxr department and then later use it with their project teams so idea here was to create a jack of all trades master of some but this way you know we could ensure that we are in a position to uh demonstrate value of research design and you know uh um uh, innovation practices while we work on our goal of you know hiring more team members building out a more dedicated ux and ur department so next <clears throat> i'm going to talk about my three top tips and uh, these are basically some of the common elements which i've seen that have worked for me uh, as i've worked uh, throughout my career journey in different organizations where i had to either create a team from scratch or scale them up so the first one is hiring is job number one this is also the first tip and there's no surprise there right because the kind of department you will build the kind of uh, performance you will get uh, depends heavily upon the quality of talent and my advice is if you are building a team from scratch or scaling up a small team hire seasoned industry experience they could be seniors or they could be leads but given a choice over juniors i would definitely go hiring more seasoned industry experience uh seasoned industry experience seniors and uh if they are from the industry that you are in uh, you know that's even more relevant because uh they will bring a wealth of experience from the same domain and 
these guys are good at communication stakeholder management and they bring more autonomy to the table and to be honest with you when you are you know scaling a team in an environment where you still have to prove the value of ux and ur you do need people who are good at you know uh, what i call hard skills their technical skills like wireframing prototyping researching but soft skills play a important part because you have to do a lot of stakeholder management you have to do uh, a lot of communication back and forth up and down the chain and that's where i think seasoned veterans are a better fit you can of course as your team expands add you know mid tier and juniors down the line but initially i would always start with seniors or leads so to give an example in my current company i was told they've hired a junior user researcher before i've joined a few years back and i looked at her work she was very good at what she did uh, but she came she was she was a junior who came from education uh, not necessarily gaming so i think while she did good work she got frustrated that her work was not generating traction she was probably not able to engage the team she still probably hadn't developed you know the stakeholder management or communication skills or ability to you know point to the teams exactly uh, what are the recommendations they should be looking at so that was one example of you know even though you had a good resource it failed to catch traction because of you know all these other soft skills which are very important so um another advantage i see is it frees up your time if i hire a lot of juniors and mid tier designers and researchers who are coming from you know uh, other domains i will spend a lot of my time mentoring them upskilling them which i'm i'm very comfortable doing down the line but not right now when i'm trying to figure out you know build this department uh, you know take up strategic and tactical initiatives so for my research team i started with hiring a lead ux uh, lead ur design uh, user sorry lead user researcher for our existing product lines or live games and uh, a a principal uh, researcher for our new products okay the second tip i can share with you is getting a foot in the door i'm sure you have heard this one before so <laughs> in any company you know where you are either which has no or low ux maturity as we established earlier you will need to prove yourself you will need to prove the value of ux if you are incorporating a new technique you know you'll be asked why do we need to do it you know is it going to add more time obviously these things do add time same for user research so most of the times the advice you know i mean is a good advice we've heard is try to get a you know a uh, foot in the door if you can demonstrate by you know just one study which is very precision driven and brings value for the stakeholders for product or business functions you can you know show some improvement in metrics or which aids the decision making you know slowly show them the value and then the door will open so i think that's a great uh, you know approach but i take this metaphor even forward for me a door opens two ways you can open a door in two ways most doors you can push a door to open it or you can pull a door to open it so strategically i divide the initiatives that my team has to take the uxr team into two buckets a pull bucket and a push bucket so what is a pull bucket a pull bucket is all the initiatives all the features that the product team or our business stakeholders want us to take for example if a product team is build, building a feature they might want to they might reach out to us and say hey uh we are trying to build this feature but we are not sure that you know it will appeal to our players can you do some kind of research to let us know uh who are the players to whom it will appeal and what do they think about it so we might think of some user research study or they might want us to do a usability test session to just check whether you know uh is the feature easy to understand will it work for our players so all these initiatives where the request is coming directly from your project teams where they are pulling us in are fall under a pull bucket but then there is this push bucket where nobody is asking us for anything uh the kind of initiatives where nobody is asking us probably because either they don't think those initiatives will add value those methods or techniques from ux ui repository will add value or they simply don't know they exist so these are under push bucket in the push bucket we try to you know take up these initiatives which might need more time so one good example is in my life when i joined i started doing uh ux audits of our existing games so the, these are live games so what we did was looked at the game from a heuristic perspective we we developed our own uh heuristics for games specifically and we looked at our game and our competitor and we used mixed methods we looked at the quant data we looked at how the market is performing how these competitors are performing in terms of revenue downloads retention daily average users you know we also looked at player data 
like kind of reviews pain points players were talking about you know we looked at the strengths and weaknesses of our game we compared it with strengths and weaknesses of other game then we made recommendations you know okay what should we solve in the short term what can we focus on in the mid term what what are definitely things we should look at in the long term so these reports were created they were sent to this project teams we received good feedback but then that was it you know we didn't receive much traction afterwards we did these in the beginning of the year and 6 months down the line the teams had to look start looking at quarter 3 quarter 4 road map for next year and they were like yeah what are the pain points in our game where can we improve and they're like yeah we remember that you guys did this audit can you send it back to us so uh that's the beauty of it you know these push initiative it doesn't matter that you did these initiatives on your own and they didn't create immediate impact but down the line down the line as the need arises you know people will start again reaching out to you so that is an example of push bucket we did other things like you know 14 day diary studies um um moderated usability testing on zoom which was like very challenging in pandemic because we couldn't get players in but we figured out a way and uh, yeah An- another thing i always tell my team is invent a safe place to fail an experiment now i think as i mentioned the third pillar for this uxr department was innovation and you have to you know you have to create a safe place to fail people people often are afraid of innovating or trying new things because they they are like what happens if this this fails it will fall on my face you know i, I will look foolish and because of that fear they either do not speak up or not willing to innovate so for me i i like to create a safe place to fail and experiment within the department how i do that is i create weekly rituals so we have weekly rituals we call it fire drills for design thinking where you know we can have uh problems related to projects people are working on or a project that we might take up as a department and we try to brainstorm around it understand what the problems are or techniques for more new idea generation so that gives a low stakes setting for you know the team to practice uh innovation techniques and methods and another way i go about it is i i look at the product team i look at the product and look at its road map chances are if i go in and say hey there's this new feature coming up which is due to be launched end of the month can i try uh, a a new usability technique can i do a focus group to understand whether it will appeal to the players or not or can i do some ab testing of uh, prototypes i have built different ways you know um not dev prototype design prototype just to see how we can solve this problem in different ways and chances are you will be told no it's very close to launch and you know we one we don't have time second this is a multi million dollar product you don't want to make a costly mistake you know which which is ca- causing heavy losses to the company just in the name of experimentation so what we try to do is de risk it create a low risk environment and how i do that is look at the 6 months road map or a one year down the line road map and pick up a feature which is coming down the line maybe it's due to be launched in 4 months or 6 months that is it will reach production stage or development stage after 3 4 or 6 months and that's a good way to de risk it you take a feature which is not an immediate priority and you start front loading the ux and ur pipeline stages you have proposed for example you might say yeah we want to first start with user research do players really see this thing as a problem and if they do Uh, is this the right solution just concept testing you know nothing built yet then we can also you know as we gain traction try to create multiple ways prototype multiple ways to solve the same problem so idea is if it is something which is not an immediate priority you can you know take it through your entire ux ur process pipeline and demonstrate value to the stakeholders they might come across information which might make them think hmm we never asked this question yeah this is interesting we would like to use more of this and using these kind of approaches uh here's my third top tip creating a safe place to fail we were able to offer a gamut of services to our uh game teams and stakeholders and as you can see this is the complete portfolio of services we offer and it starts all the way from insight mining high level research understanding our players all the way to vision building so this is a combination of techniques and methods we offer for both tactical and strategic initiative for example there is stuff like ux audits user interviews persona modeling prototyping that you need on day to day basis but if we go towards the right side of the um, arrow you will see we have vision building future casting ecosystem assessment for example we can look at the data 
for how a, a game category or product category performed in last five years, what the trends are, are they, you know, going us, are certain metrics going up, going down? If yes, what is causing it? Uh, a combination of mixed methods, quant and qual research, and then even go to our stakeholders and say, hey, would you like to do a workshop where we can, you know, look at uh, what's going to change? What's the direction we should be taking? How the market will be evolving in the next two or five years? So the gamut of services we offer are from everyday tactical stuff to all the way long-term, you know, strategic goals. And as I mentioned, we piloted almost eight new features, methodologies, and techniques in our products using push and pull approach, uh, using say by creating a safe to fail uh, experimentation space, which were never done at wildlife before. So UX audits, focus groups, uh, uh, high fit prototyping, moderated concept testing using Zoom, you know, our in-house resources, design thinking workshops. These were art concept tests. Some of these things that we have never done before, that we never done before in wildlife, we were able to do within the first six months. So Thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Cheers for now.